Hi, uh, welcome to this new session of uh, Thought. And uh, today we're going to see one tutorial that uh, we developed um, using uh, um, Jupyter Hub on uh, Open Data Hub, uh, running on Operate First. And this tutorial will show basically um, how to release some of the workload that uh, the data scientist uh, should not be uh, in charge. For example, the deployment part that can be automated by pipelines. Then you can see how uh, the use of bots can uh, help in the dependency, uh, on keeping dependencies up to date. And uh, what we will see basically is uh, what what the data scientists will focus on typically, and the rest will be handled by uh, pipelines or bots. In this way, the data scientists can focus only on their work, on their notebooks and the models that uh, needs to be created for the, for the application. So if we have a look at this uh, repo that I'm uh, sharing, um, this is the tutorial that we created. Um, it is based on one of the templates um, provided by the AI COE AI Ops team. And uh, we uh, believe that the use of these templates is something that should be um, suggested and in theory also used in general because uh, it can ease the way to uh, share these uh, projects so that anyone is uh, really able to find everything uh, quickly if you want to look for something specific uh, regarding a project. And uh, this specific template has been, uh, uh, let's say, based on the cookie cutter uh, template for data science project. And we added some of the uh, features and tools that have been created uh, in the AICOE. So specifically, you see that there is the AICOE YAML file and the TOT YAML file. And I will talk about this uh, in a moment and why they are important for the data science project at the end. Um, but let me share first uh, the project itself. So here we are on uh, Jupyter Hub, and I spun one of the uh, images that are available, and this is uh, the Elira one. So using this uh, Elira AI-centric tool, you are able to uh, create uh, pipelines that can be run on your project. Imagine if you are one, two steps which is typically something that you can expect. Uh, you have your data set that you download from some source or that you can uh, uh, retrieve from uh, some specific source. And uh, some of the steps that you will typically find is uh, so the da download the data set. So here we created one uh, simple uh, notebook, which uh, what it does simply is uh, uh, downloading the, the data set. The tutorial is based on the let's say, a low world uh, of uh, AI projects, so the MNIST uh, classification. And uh, as you can see here, what this first notebook does is just uh, uh, downloading the, um, the data set. And specifically, it will store it, in this case, uh, on, uh, on GitHub, so on the, on the RIP uh, locally. And uh, it will be stored in a specific uh, source. So as I said, the use of these templates will help in if uh, someone wants to specifically look for for something. So in this case, you will see that uh, the row, okay, this is uh, just clone, but uh, they will be stored on the row um, folder. Uh, the second notebook is uh, the training one. So basically here, we just create uh, uh, the classification uh, model and we load the data from the path that I mentioned, so for the row one, and uh, we run the um, neural network in order to uh, create the model. And at the end, we just uh, test this model that we created. So these are the two uh, steps that, uh, or the two notebooks that uh, have been created. And now, just to run all of it, uh, Elida allows you to uh, use these pipelines pipelines that can run locally or using a Kubeflow pipeline. And in that way, you could select, uh, you need to select uh, the images and uh, the basically the runtime environment that uh, you need to use in order to run these notebooks. Um, yeah, I will, I can uh, start running them, but uh, it will take some time if we uh, 
need to wait for the model to be trained. So what I want to show you is just that uh, once the data scientist finishes its work, so he has, uh, okay, there is some issue for the pipeline, for the notebook, but uh, that is not the purpose. Uh, so what I want to show is that when you finish uh, basically working on your changes, you created a new model and now you want to store it, uh, you can just uh, push it to your GitHub repository. So once you finish, you can just open a pull request and uh, this will be uh, created. In this case, uh, once you have uh, created this pull request and everything is merged, then we can basically um, create a, a new release. Uh, how do we handle uh, the deployment of the model? Um, in this GitHub templates that uh, I mentioned before, there are specific uh, folders also related to the manifest. So if you think of a GitOps approach, there will be uh, Argo CD, for example, that uh, take care of uh, syncing the, the the manifest in the in the namespace in the cluster where you want to deploy, for example. And so, what we have to do from this side is just uh, having uh, the manifests correctly created with all the overlays if you want to uh, deploy them in different uh, cluster or environment. And when this is all set then uh, you need to open, of course, uh, uh, Argo CD needs to be aware that uh, this manifest is present here, so you need to open uh, also for request in the uh, Argo CD applications. But once that is uh, done, basically the only thing that uh, the data scientist uh, needs to do once there is a change in the model uh, in order to have the new deployment is just, uh, in this case, uh, open a, a release. So there has been a, a change recently, and what I want to do now is just uh, um, open a release. I will open a patch release in this case because I know that uh, there was a fix in the um, Flask application that we created. And what happens now is that uh, um, the Tecton pipeline will be triggered. Sorry, first uh, Kebeshet will, uh, the bot will uh, handle and uh, understand what has been changed in your repository and uh, creating a change, change log about what has been uh, uh, modified, the latest pull request, and it will open a pull request for you when uh, this is ready. So once that pull request will be merged, then will be triggered the uh, uh, Tecton pipelines, and uh, at the end of this pipeline, there will be created an image. And this image will be available on QA so, um, once finished. And uh, same pipeline will uh, op will basically modify the image stream tag that uh, we have in the in the repository because it's uh, linked to that. How does it knows that? Um, as I mentioned before, there are two um, files. One is the ISOE YAML file, and this, the other one is the TOT YAML file. But uh, in the yeah, so YAML file, basically, you can see that uh, you have all the requirements for build and uh, where it will be basically build the image and will be, sorry, the image, the base image that will be used and uh, where it will be available. So on Quay, on uh, AI, AI DevSecOps tutorial. And the deploy, as you see, will it basically uh, point to the manifest folder that I mentioned before and will uh, update the the, over, the image stream tag with the new image that will be available. In this way, basically, the data scientist doesn't have to do uh, anything in this case because it will be, everything will be handled by the um, by the pipelines in order to redeploy the model. What he has to do is just focus on uh, on his notebooks and uh, the model, be sure that uh, that is accurate and uh, everything is correct from the application point of view. But the rest can be handled uh, uh, by these pipelines. This is a very simple case. Uh, we use a Flask application that uh, just deploys the model, and there is one single, there are two endpoints that are uh, um, created. One is to have the prediction, and the other one is just to uh, expose the metrics regarding the application. So you can see also the model version and the um, application version, which in this case uh, matches the uh, image version. So as you see, this is the last one we had. 
and this is what you find actually deployed in the cluster on, uh, in Operate First. So once the new release will be created, then we will uh, basically see that uh, the new pipeline uh, will uh, redeploy the new model. Um, yeah, I think um, this is what I want to show you today. And if you have any question, please uh, let me know, let us know. Thank you. Any idea what the average round trip time is? I mean, you, you told uh, the bot to create a new patch release. This takes a little bit of time. It's going to build the image. It's going to modify the um, customized manifest files. Argo CD needs to kick in, all that blah, blah, blah. So it's taking obviously more than three minutes because that's when you created the issue. Uh, do you know when it will maybe finish? Um, I expect to be faster um, because usually for a, such a small uh, image should not take that time. So if we have a look. Uh, so it's something like five minutes, 10 minutes? Yeah, something even less usually. Can okay. But uh, there will be also something that we will monitor in the future. So if we need to improve that, we can work on that. Okay. Other questions? So my apologies if uh, I'm asking something you explained, I joined later. Uh, no so uh, you are developing the notebooks uh, in in uh, Elira. Uh, that, that's clear. And yes. then you then you run the run the pipeline in Lyra in Elira, and that be, that builds the model, right? That builds the and stores it stores it it somewhere. And then uh, you are building you are building an image with uh, the Flask application that exposes the model via some API. So you are committing the model to the to Git or how does yes. the Flask application? Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Basically, uh, so... so you run the pipeline in Lyra, and then you then you commit the model, whatever data is needed, etc. And then on top of that, you you run the run the build from GitHub, right? Exactly. So what the data science will do is just uh, focusing on these notebooks, then push everything to Git, and then uh, it will be handled by by the pipelines, by the bots. Yeah, reading the uh, reading the tutorial on GitHub, I I uh, it was not clear to me where uh, where how, how the, uh, where the model is going to be deployed. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the explanation. Um, I'm improving the documentation. There is a open PR, which is a work in progress, but uh, I will explain better all of this. So, including where, for example, you need to place. Uh, everything in the ICOE YAML file to be aware of where you will deploy and also that you require to open up a request. Um, I mean, this is all part of the operate first uh, description on how to add application there. So. And uh, since you are uh, pl playing or working with uh, notebooks, uh, I have a question regarding best practices. So when you start a project inside uh, Elira or Notebooks that run Jupyter Hub. How do you connect the repo? Do you do you go to GitHub and generate one time password and use HTTP authentication, or do you generate SSH key, or what's the pattern? Uh, very very uh, valid question. Let's uh, stay focused on uh, Francesco's demo. Um, um, I he must have done that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I think to 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 give it a little bit context, I I asked Francesco to really show only this. Data scientist is creating image. Yes, we are using a certain uh, repository, structure, repository structure and stuff like that. But data scientist is creating an image, putting it, uh, sorry, model, putting it into Git, asking the bot to create a container image out of that with a Flask application, which is not super fancy, uh, and deploy that using Argo City. So we really want to show it's just a very simple handoff. Data scientist created his model, committed it to Git, and sent it off. Um, but you're exactly right. There's stuff happening before that. So the data scientists need to set up his project, the pipelines and all that stuff. And there's stuff happening uh, on, on, on more complex um, um, examples, right? We're just looking at an uh, MNIST, TensorFlow, Elira kind of thing here. 
it could, uh, I think Zubin is also working on that, it could also be a PyTorch Iris data set, more complex uh, thing in here. We're, we're really just trying to, to uh, do pretty fast baby steps here. Standard model, MNIST, standard approach, create that model, serialize it to disk, take it into production. Um, keep your question um, in mind because I think that is something that we should uh, redirect to the data scientist meetup of um, Michael Clifford and uh, Francesco. One quick question on my end because you didn't explicitly show how to um, do the git commit and git push. That's also done via the Elira UI, correct? The git pull? Yes. No, get the git push and the git commit. So the data yeah. scientist doesn't need to leave the browser. It just switches from Elira to, what is it, GitHub. Exactly. Yeah. So um, he, he stays in, in, in Elira. He's doing all his stuff. He's, he's delivering five commits. And in the end, he thinks, okay, this is exactly the model that should go to production or to test or whatever the environment is. Then he heads over to GitHub and creates a tag release by asking the Cabochet bot to create a new patch release or major release or whatever it is. Marcel, you can do it uh, from the terminal in Elira or you can do it uh, via the UI. There is bo both, uh, both is available. And the only, only bit missing is the one that I was asking about. Yeah, if you push with a token on with the SSH key. That's uh, something uh, I think we should uh, um, document, but uh, I wouldn't say that uh, one can be better than the other. I mean, if you want to push uh, every 10 minutes, then uh, probably better to have an SSH key. But uh, once you delete the pod, I guess everything is lost, so you need to recreate it every time. While if you work and you just push uh, once, uh, maybe the token is uh, faster. Is it that you are starting to discuss a feature request? Mm. Mm. Any other questions to Francesco? I, I have two because I'm probably ignorant and, and new. Um, one is, is how do you um, designate the code that's going to be run in the container that's going to be served up? Like was it in a notebook or did you have a separate, I know there's a model, usually it's a big file, there's some sort of loading for tensor or whatever. How do you uh, designate what code gets run inside that container? You are talking about the model, how basically we are right. exposing our, our, our Is there a specific uh, code in the Flask app that knows how to load that? Is there a python.py yeah. section? Is there a code in the notebook that gets annotated? How are you telling what gets loaded into the Flask app? A, yeah, so a design decision, we mesh everything up into just one repository, right? We, we are not separating right. anything here. We stuff everything in here. That is why we got that Flask application in there that uh, Francesco is now showing. And if you see at the code, we are basically creating a class that uh, basically do the loading and the um, prediction. So if there are so, some small processing to be done, and then we just expose it with the Flask, yes. So does the so the, does the data scientist have to mess with this code, or does it only work with specific formats? I mean, uh, I think it the, the, depends. So in this case, the model is uh, quite small, and uh, you can just load it uh, from from the repo. So if the mod, if the application is similar and the model is not so big, I assume that this can be also created by default because uh, at the end you want to predict and uh, expose the metrics. Maybe for a small application this can be reused as well. They don't need to recreate everything. But in general, for other time time there's somebody's going to have to maintain this code then for the Flask app for the loading. Exactly, well, and I think that's the point where maybe an AI-related developer jumps in. Maybe you want to have two or three prediction endpoints because you want to have two or three versions of the model up and running. Maybe you need to do some parameter transformation, this and that. Um, that is stuff that we on purpose pushed back and ignored uh, for, for, for a moment. But we are as good as ignore as you are when it comes to ignoring. 
uh, because we just want to keep it simple. But it's a, it's yeah. a very valid question. Um, yeah, but the, because if you, somebody needs to sit down with the data scientists and create that that model Flask application. Yeah, but if you think, for example, what uh, they do in uh, Eldon Core, in yeah. any case, they ask you to create uh, a Python class in a certain way that needs to be created by someone. So either the data scientist needs to know how to create that uh, Python class. Right. And I'm, then, I'm just getting to this, this single pain point that happens in every single serving solution. Is It boils down to someone's got to have a requirements file and a, and a Python serving uh, thing in a certain format, or they or they manage it themselves, whether it's S2I, Selden, whatever. But it seems like everything's got to do that. So I just wanted to see, because there's other things. I think I saw the notch list thing, which is trying to take in annotated code out of Jupyter Notebooks, and there's I just wanted to see how you guys are doing it. But I like I like this method better, where it's like, because um, it's specific to that thing. My other question was just like, is there a slim down version of this pipeline that someone can use if they don't want to use Quay.io or like the on bots? Can we use like an on cluster build version of this Tecton pipeline? Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's it, yeah. <laughs> that's what, yeah so, um, Hashart um, has created all these uh, pipelines. I think they are still under the AI CUE. It's basically um, stuff that we contribute back to the uh, Operate First uh, initiative. Um, it's 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 in Tecton pipeline, therefore it's an open shift pipeline. Um, if you don't want to push to Quay, don't do it. Um, modify the task. Um, if you don't want to use the images, the base build images that we provide on Quay, don't do it. Just point the uh, pipeline to a different uh, image. Um, all the stuff is on GitHub. I think it's it's no magic in there, right? It's it's a Tecton pipeline that is building in, in Flask application. Um, it might get a little bit trickier if we are talking about uh, images that are way too large to store on Git, or if we are talking about uh, pipelines that are optimizing um, images using OpenVINO, or if we are converting to ON and X, or if we are doing tens uh, um, PyTorch serving, stuff like that. Then the pipelines might get a little bit more complicated, but in general, it's just a Tecton pipeline, so you can build all your stuff on a cluster. Thank you. H Hashard, I'm hoping I'm not overselling here right now. Uh, I think that's it, right? Yes. Uh, just a note that if some, like, I think Christoph asked uh, if uh, it, if someone can build it in their own internal cluster, if they want to do that, they can just pull the Tecton pipelines and change the bit, whatever they want to, like, based on that and deploy it on their own uh, namespace or cluster. Cool. Cool. I'll have to give it a try. Uh, yeah, reach out to us. Um, we are happy to to send you all the stuff that you can just customize onto your cluster um, using the command line customize. I meant. Um, any other questions for Francesco? Cool. Uh, thanks, Francesco. I'm going to stop the recording and prepare the stage for the next uh, one.